So we created our radar overlay. It looks like a CRT screen now. If you would put it onto a CRT, a black CRT screen on set, you could easily get away with it looking like it is an actual element in the shot. Now we're going to actually track it and put it into a different type of LCD screen. We will use Blender as the motion tracker and we'll do some uh, planar match moving, as we call it. And then we put up our animated texture on that plane. Now we created a texture for a square aspect ratio because the majority of these screens that I have created these elements for in a TV series and in a recent movie um, are square or circular and well, we are creating this rectangular 16 by 1 ratio so we will squash the uh, image just a bit but that's okay we could actually get by and make it square we're not focusing we're going to project the image onto that whole plane so let's start tracking it so we did the render of the comp and now we're going to track it into a piece of footage that I have provided. So we're going to go visual effects, motion tracking, open the footage, F, uh, where is it? And you will find in the link below, it's sequence 04. It's from a little short, the horror short, comedy horror short that we did for Halloween. It's 75 frames long. We prefetch it so it's in memory, so it plays back quickly. Then we first have a look at it. Oh, there's a nice big bump in the road. My hand occludes the corners, so that will definitely make a planar track very dodgy. So we do a 3D track, we put a plane on over there. Okay, yeah, there's a big motion, definitely rotation, location because it's handheld and skill. So we're going back to the beginning frame. So we say location, rotation and skill. We saw location, rotation and skill. Always use the previous frame to check as well. The camera was a Alpha 6300, which has a sensor size of 23.5 millimeters. 23.5 millimeters there. The lens was a 60 millimeter, the kit lens, the default the blender says right now, perfect. Now we start to add trackers. Control and click. And this is the ideal place for a tracker. Anything that is a square, a triangle, uh, across are perfect trackers. And always put them on the edge. I see so many people go like, oh, that's a nice tracker. And let's put it in the center. Um, the way that most trackers work is that they track the color of pixel values. So in this case, if it's in the middle and there's a bump up or down in the footage, it still sees a white tracker and it's not a uh, white pixel. So it could be confused and this is where you get that weird drift from. Always put it on the edge. If there's one thing you take from this lesson, put your trackers on the edge. And always look for something on the X and the Y plane that can combat the fact that if we would move down, it would be a wide pixel, so it could still be confused. So here we could use this. It still wouldn't really help, but this would help. So also when you put tracking markers on sets, and as a VFX supervisor, I always talk to the first AD to see what is the motion going to be like with the camera when we need to put in a CG element? And I make sure that we put trackers on strategic places that are on that same level on the X, the Y and the Z. That way we can always recreate the scene. So here we have something that's a bit off, but we have something that is in approximation here. that one up. Oh, that is a nice one. That would be the sort of a marker that you would set in a studio. Crosses are also good and this is as close to a cross as we could get probably. Scale that one up. Edges of boxes are always good. 
let's kill that one up. A tracker is math. It's it's simple math. I built a couple of them back in the 2000s for astrophotography and uh, for medical uh, imaging. And recently I built one for Dunkirk to do a relative track of some uh, water. So there we go. So we have enough around this plane. So we're going to save it. Rotation, okay, when we make sure we're on frame zero, always before you do the tracks, it makes life so much easier in Blender. Track forward, okay. We only had one selected, that's okay. A, 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 I want to select them all. Um, yeah, okay, we have a few trackers that are Confusing the lot, but that's okay. Right here, before the motion blur, right here, it's already close. So one frame before that, remove that. Click off. Uh, with trackers, it's that one motion blur frame and having an offset could cause more problems than having one frame less of tracking data. Remove that, and it removes all the keyframes from this point and disables the tracker. And this one in the bottom. Okay, this is a nice point to clear that out. The one in the top. Uh, something here, I guess, yeah. Disable that, and then we have the FM sign going off right about here. It's dimming, my hand is going in front of it, so I will delete those here. Now we're going to re enable those that are still visible because we need them. So starting with the one in the bottom, right click enable and track it back to the end. Boop. There we go. Those two right there. Enable, uh, I will put it back on that cross, or cross on the point, sorry. Put it right there, there we go. Select those two and Track them again, there we go. This is a nice moment to save some. And uh, this actually is potentially an issue tracker. It looks like it's doing a good job, but we're not certain because the reference is gone. So over here, before the line goes off, there, we will disable this tracker and we will add a couple here just because we can go back to the beginning there skill up skill up skill up and tracking is a, it, it's a tedious job. It is really a tedious job. I have the utmost respect for people that do that for a living. Okay, we go to the beginning. A, go to the solve tab. I initially am inclined to solve nothing. I uh, refine nothing because I think we're doing, oh, look at that, 0.3855. Control S, that's the moment that you want to save. That is a good track. We're going to add a few more things here on the edge now. It's sort of a secondary track, but mainly to set the origin and uh, the floor to align our plane to that we put the radar screen on. So this one, S, 
think that one is a nice one as well. Scale. Click. Control click. Scale. And you have these advanced trackers like Synthize, Buju, and they are wonderful. Um, I love Synthize with a passion. And for most difficult, sh uh, more difficult shots, it's worth the 500 bucks that you have to pay for it. Really worth it. And the auto detect features are so much better in there. Uh, but for relatively simple things, and if you have time, Blender can do a perfect job. It just takes a bit more time. And we track these, and these will have... Uh, oh, this one is still alive, that's kind of cool. This one goes... Okay, I am playing it safe. I will delete that here. Yeah, playing it safe, delete that one there, and the other two go off, and the bottom one is still tracking, okay, cool. Solve, uh, slightly bigger, but it could be cool to have these as a reference to set our environment to. With tracking, it's also very important to have a progress. So save your uh, your little victories often. <laughs> okay, we'll select these three and we say that will be our floor plane. Then this one will be a perfect little origin, set origin. And that's why I said look for something perpendicular, and this one is perpendicular, and we can set that as the x-axis. That is kind of nice here. Yeah. Set the background. Set up tracking scene. And uh, I'm not convinced that this looks really good. Uh, let's go to the modeling tab. Well, let's see how it sticks. Oh, it sticks nicely. But it's definitely confused. And I think that's because we don't have a skill. Now, I think that this is about 12 centimeters. Let's see what happens if we go back and add 12 centimeters in there. So I say this one and this one has a skill of 12 set skill and we go into the uh, where is it I'm still a bit units here still looking for things in uh, blender centimeters oh, there we go Pew. solve camera set it this way around so set floor plane now it's more perpendicular yeah that's that looks better set x-axis or actually set this as the origin and set this as my x-axis still a bit wonky I would expect it to line up a bit better mm. If we say, let's use these as a floor plane. And I can use this as my origin as well. And use this, this will be going up as my Y plane. And this as my X plane. Ah, look at that. That is nicer. That looks nicer. Yeah. There is not enough uh, tracking data for Blender to actually notice the depth. There is a bit of depth in this. Uh, yeah, in this bezel. So it would 
it was throwing it off for that. We may need to compensate in setting this uh, up in our model. Let's see how it sticks. Okay, that sticks nicely. So we can now start to align uh, the things. I will delete the floor plane. Oh, tap out of edit mode. Delete the cube and add a new, just a new plane. The floor plane has shadow on it, a shadow capture on it. It's a tedious job to set that right. Go into edit mode, grab the vertex and only move on the X and the Y, not on the Z axis. If we move on the Z axis, we will pick up the whole plane, not the individual verts. Grab X and grab Y and we'll just bring them in the ballpark initially and tweak them later. Grab X, grab Y, grab X, grab Y, grab X, grab Y. Uh, we go to the semi-shaded view, that really helps. And maybe we should look for a frame that has some of that screen still on there. And that is the cool thing that we have right here, for example, modeling. That gets us really close. Grab X, grab Y, grab X. And because I know that this is about four or five millimeters deeper, we may need to remo uh, move the plane four or five millimeters deeper than those buttons. And that's my job as a VFX supervisor is gathering that sort of information so that the people that are doing the tracking, and sometimes that is me, unfortunately, have enough information to rebuild the 3D environment and that prevents slippage that we see so often and people complain about. That looks actually pretty decent. Let's see how it sticks. That sticks like herpes onto a cheap prostitute. That is good. Yeah, that is good. So time for another save increment. Save as. I'm teaching you the right way now. <laughs> Trust me, if you don't, you, you can easily do something that throws everything out of whack and then you would need to go all the way back to the beginning and that is something you don't want. This this really tracks in nicely. Yeah, it's Now we have this little light, we got that for free. And even though we're not going to use it because we're using an emission shader, but since I see the light over here on the uh, on the dash, I know that the light is up there in, in Z. And it's so we could actually take it, grab Z, move it up out of frame, grab Y. It's way, it's I believe close to the windshield. It's, yeah, it's on the edge of the top of the windshield. So. I grab Y, uh, sorry, grab X, it's of course over there, grab Z, grab Y, grab Z, and grab X, something like that, it should be s in space, it is, I know for a fact that it's actually a bit more that way. Rotate and it comes RR. Oh, it's point light. So, so you would set it up like so, and that is why the HDR with all the light really help. And on the subject of lights, since we are anyways, I give you a little bonus. Even though we're not going to use it once more uh, because we're using emission shader with emission one, so it will not catch any light. But on the subject of lights, I see a lot of people going like, and eh, let's make it a little bit yellow. Or a little bit blue. 
that is not how photorealistic comping and 3D recreation works. You actually need to put in a proper value. And there is this website. Uh, what is it called? Kelvin to RGB converter. I think it's the Tenor Holland, this one. No. I will put the link in the description. Ah, here we go. You can put in uh, the Kelvin number and it will generate a hex number for you. And we can put that into Blender. Now, how do you know what color temperature it is? You will measure that on set. As a uh, VFX supervisor, I walk around with a device that actually measures the color temperature and I know that and I even scribble that uh, on the AGRIs as well on a separate la layer like okay this is that color temperature. Now oh, I happen to know that in this case it's an incandescent incandescent light bulb color temperature I looked it up before as we deem 242550. So let's split the difference let's say it's 2500. 2500. That is how orange it is. It is really orange and it has this value. So tweaking it little little bits like I see so many people do and wonder like oh my my lighting is off. Yeah, because your eyes don't really see that saturation because it's emitting light, but it's really orange. Let's put it in there. Click click on the, the, the color thing and then you go and go to hex or the RGB values, but that's uh, in one to zero space and so not really helpful. Boom. And that is the color of your light. That is how <laughs> that is how it works. Okay, there was a little side note. Um, so let's add uh, a texture, but we need to be in cycles. Because EV doesn't support uh, moving textures at this stage. And we don't need hair. We do need motion blur. And that should be on 0.5. Because we shot on a 50th. Which is almost 180 degrees. Which is almost half. So we shot a size of 0.5. Yeah. And we want to have the transparency. We get that for free. Nice. Okay, now we're going to set up the material new. Uh, it's going to be an emission shader. Emission shader. Shift A image. Yeah, not a ambient occlusion. Image. Image texture. Thank you. The color into this. We keep the strength on one because we want it to be shadeless. Render tut. AA. Open image. And if we go to rendered mode, we should see it here, and it should be animating. So yes, it is it is rendering and it is updating. Cool. So now we do some basic compositing because it's it's not really fitting in. So we've done the tracking. We now go to compositing this shot. <coughs> 